everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day. It is Thursday in our last episode. We made some adjustments to the team you can see on your screen in front of you right now. We introduced the Mega Salamence and unfortunately we didn't actually get to feature it in our last game. So hopefully going into today's game we'll be able to feature that. We have made some further adjustments to the team going into today's episode and all of those changes will be detailed down in the description as always in a poker paste and a roll paste. You guys can check that out. Take the team away as I always say try it out and if you do let me know in the comment section how you get on with it so the adjustments that we've made we've tweaked the EV spread of the Ultra Necrozma now one of the things that I thought would be nice to be able to do is sit in front of a Mega Gengar it's obviously going to be faster than you and be able to take that Cheddar Ball so now we can do that and we can still guarantee the KO on it in return with the Photon Geyser and more importantly guarantee that knockout onto a standard Tapu Fini with the Photon Geyser in Psychic Train so we've still got that play that we're able to do to remove that support option from opposing teams and the other option was a big shout out to Salty Electabuzz here for mentioning the after you on the Clefairy so we are a little bit prone and weak to Trick Room at the minute with this team. Clefairy is a really good option for us there and if we've got the access to the after you on that it means we can still utilize some of our Pokemon in Trick Room and take advantage of it that way. So as I say there are the changes we're going to jump into it today. Hopefully it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to bringing the Ments which we are going to do 100% guaranteed today so it will be a lot of fun regardless and um, just to let you know as well guys obviously we have done a bunch of guides in the ultra series so if you are getting into the ultra series and you would like to learn a little bit more about the format I will link the guides up here you can go back and check all of those out we've covered an introduction Primal Kyogre, Primal Garadon Mega Rayquaza, Ultra Necrozma as well, and we will have more guides coming next week covering some of those Mega Pokemon, so do keep an eye out for those. As always, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to drop a like on the video, do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content, and as always, leave your comments down in the comment section below because I love hearing from you all and I will get back to you all as soon as possible. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. We will crack some music on before I forget to. and. Um, a reminder as well that hopefully, pending my Wi-Fi, we will be doing a stream tonight. Now, I did try to do one on Tuesday for all of you that did turn up on Tuesday. We had a bit of a disaster. I've got some serious issues in my area at the moment with my home Wi-Fi. So, it does mean that I am experiencing quite a lot of issues. The stream got cut off and we couldn't continue. And then I proceeded to be on hold for 40 minutes. And then they cut me off, so I was in a great mood Tuesday night after that. But hopefully if the if my internet is back up and running on Thursday this evening, I will be kicking off around 7pm, so do come by if you are around. It would be great to see you guys, and we'll be playing viewer battles this evening on the stream. So, as I say, the link to the Twitch channel is down in the description. Do come by if you are around. Normal stream schedule is on a Tuesday evening a Thursday evening 7 p.m. and then 9 30 on a Saturday morning so it'd be great to see you guys there can't find an opponent so I'm gonna search again but I will cut to where we can bump straight into our next opponent so we'll be right back and we have our first opponent of the episode so we got Wyatt on 1532 rating so we'll hop straight over into team preview so Wyatt is playing a team of Groudon Tapu Lele, Incineroar, Salamence, Amoongus, and Dawnwings Necrozma. So we've got that Dawnwings Necrozma Primal Groudon core there. You've got a similar build to what we're playing, really. The only difference, really, is the Amoongus um, to what we would be running as Clefairy there. So, um, what do we do to lead, I think? Um, Tapu Lele is not bad, honestly. Um, although... At the same time, like the Tabulele is good for the, the men's. It stops the Incineral being so threatening. Um, and we could go Ultra Necrozma as well. I think if we do that, we want Incineral in the back. And definitely Salamence here, I think. Just as an alleviation against that Groudon. Um, I am kind of tempted to bring a Clefairy here. Because Clefairy with the Friend Guard... Especially if we can get Tapu Lele onto the field, and uh, could be quite useful um, with the psychic terrain up, and then having the field condition of Ultra Necrozma and Clefairy out could be could be extremely good. Um, I just I'm just mindful that we really need the Incineroar for the Intimidate primarily for the Groudon, and then something to hit that Ultra Necrozma with. Um, but we'll go with Salamence here because I did say we are going to bring Salamence, and I do think there is utility in it, so we'll go. 
and see how we get on in this first one. So good luck to Wyatt. It's going to be a good one to kick us off with today. It's tough. The mirror is always going to be a tough matchup, I think, for in any format, in any situation. Uh, a mirror is always kind of one of those things that you don't really want to have to deal with. Um, we're going to lead off with the Dawn Wings and the Tapulele, and we'll see my opponent lead off with the Tapulele and the Salamence. Okay. So, I mean, we're not in a bad position at all here because we don't necessarily need to Ultra Burst this turn, which is probably one of the better things for us doing with the, the Dawn Wings, at least, because we'll probably see that Lele there go for a Moonblast into our our necrozma slot so we can just moon guys beam into that slot and um, that should be enough to take the lele down you've got to imagine and we can just go i mean we could go for a light screen but i think it's better if we just take advantage of the board position that we've got we can nuke the salamence uh, with a moon blast which should be enough to take it down here you're going to see the salamence mega revolve on my opponent's side of the field so let's see what we do. Oh, we've not seen any protect, so we are going to get this Moonblast. Like I said, it should be enough to take the Salamence down. And it is, so we get a quick early knockout there. Deny any speed control from my opponent as well as the Moonblast from the Tapulele. Kind of detecting maybe that we are going to go for that Ultra Burst, but not going for it in the Moonguys Beam. It would be nice if we could get a quick 2KO here. That would be amazing, because uh, it does mean... We might get three games today as well. And we do, we do pick up the knockout there. So we're in a really nice position going into the rest of this game. Be interesting to see what comes in. I imagine the Primal Groudon will be in the back. Because the Salamence setting that up, obviously alongside the, the, the Dawnwings and the Crosma, is going to be my opponent really probably wants to go for here. Um, but we've, all, we've always got the option to bring in either one of our Intimidators. I think I prefer to probably bring in Salamence. Um, over Incineroar and keep Incineroar because I feel like um, hmm. oh do we oh do we oh do we not hmm. it's just if we if the, the opposing Ultra Necrozma Ultra Bursts we're going to see so he hasn't got one of the restricted which one has he brought I'm going to say it's a Groudon yeah okay so life just gets so much easier for our um, our Salamence now come in and just disrupt especially with the Eruption. I mean, one of the things we could potentially do here is just Mega Revolt, uh, Ultra Burst Protect with um, our Ultra Necrozma and then bring in Salamence on our Tapulele slot. And then at least we've got Scarf Tapulele to come in at the very end if things go really wrong. But I don't feel like they're going to go that wrong from this point in time. So we will Ultra Burst. We'll, uh, we'll just Protect here. And then we will switch into our Salamence. Get that Intimidate off and uh, we'll be able to feature Mega Salamence for the first time on the channel in the ultra series which is very exciting and we're finally able to do i love mega salamence as well it is one of my favorite megas and it, i'm surprised well i'm not surprised it's the core we're playing um it's just taken so long for us to feature it but finally we are here and uh, i'm sure as we get a bit further into the ultra series and delve a little bit deeper into team archetypes and things we'll see a lot more from mega salamence its utility in the format is amazing well there we go we're just going to ultra burst there we'll just get the protective Ooh. We are going to see the, the sword stance from the men, uh, from the Groudon. Hmm. And a snarl come out from this Incineroar. Okay. That's fine. Uh, we do have access to our Z move now that we could potentially go for. Um, hmm. I just feel like the Groudon protects here. And that's why I don't really want a Z move. Um, I kind of would prefer to go uh no we're not gonna we're not gonna z move we're gonna just go earth power into the incineral remove that and uh we'll mega evolve with salamence and go double edge and that should be enough to get the incineral because we're we're not intimidated so a double edge should be doing a lot of damage salamence will go after our, our ultra necrozma so we'll get the earth power first and as i suspect i reckon the groudon protects here yeah trying to get a snarl off on us so we uh able to detect that and we should be able to make hasty work of this incineral yeah it's definitely in range for a double edge now and here we go boom boom there we go so that seals up the game for us because next turn we can just z move ultra burst z move whatever we're calling it light that burns the sky and that will be more than enough I mean, we don't even need to do it. Just to save editing, obviously. We'll just Earth Power and um, Hyper Voice. And that'll be enough to get the crowd on. Bye. 
a long way. So there's the earth part. Might even be enough to get it. No. Ooh, hyper voice single target. It's going to be close, but I mean, we're not in any trouble, are we? It's just getting the 4-0. I'm going to miss out. Fire punch. Where's it going into Salamence? Yeah, there we go. Salamence to take this, though, because it's just a beast. There we go. And uh, Necrozma going to get all the glory. Um, we could have went for the Z move. It would have been over in a turn quicker, but it's fine. It's fine. It's all right. We're going to maybe be able to get a few games in today because of that one being so quick. So very good game to why I think just showing how oppressive that lead of Tapulele scarfed and then the Ultra Necrozma is and having that option as well not to Ultra Burst straight away to, to kind of take advantage of situations like that but taking an, an early lead like that in any game is always going to be um, pretty one-sided uh, losing two Pokemon so early on especially turn one it, it's pretty hard to come back from so um, and it is early days in the format so you can't really um, be too judgmental on players at this point they're still learning the format and learning what things do so um, very good game to kick us off with either way and we got to see Salamence which is always a lot of fun so we'll hop in to our next game hopefully it doesn't take too long again if it does I will uh, I'll just cut to it and we'll come straight back when I bump into another opponent so we have our second opponent of the episode it's gonna be Tommy from Italy I don't know what music we've clicked in on I've been cycling the search function now for the last 25 minutes no joke but we'll get into team preview I can complain about that in a little bit so, for our second team today, we're going up against Tommy. He's playing a core of Rayquaza, Tapu Fini, Xerneas, Incineroar, Landorus Therian, and Tapu Koko. So, an interesting X ray build here. We've got the combination of the Rayquaza and obviously the Xerneas common combination that you're going to see in this format and then you've got the Tapu Lele there we've got the Incineroar there for the f fake out support the intimidate support alongside that Landorus it's going to offer that as well there's very little speed control outside of maybe Icy Wind on my opponent's team from that Tapu Lele so that's quite positive for us going forward I think one of the things that we need to be a little bit careful of obviously is that um Xerneas here leading out for my opponent and one of the things that I probably want to do is lead Necrozma I think we will bring Incineroar just because the Intimidate is going to be useful against the opposing Incineroar, Landorus and that Rayquaza um, I will bring Tapu Lele because it's a nice switch in we can try and make that play where we can nuke something turn 1 with our Z move depending on whether or not the Incineroar comes out on the field as well for my opponent and I think could bring Clefairy Salamence, but I think we're going to bring Xerneas here um, and go straight into this next one. So, good luck to Tommy, all there in his coma all gear. Yeah, literally, I've been sitting searching, no, po no opponent, no opponent, no opponent for 25 minutes. Literally 25 minutes, I can see. <laughs> it's crazy. Where is everyone? You would think the Ultra Series is going mad hype at the minute, but uh, maybe it's my my internet at home because i have been having issues as i said earlier with it so maybe that is one of the issues that we're looking at but um who knows right we are going to see the xerneas and the tapu finny come up for my opponent i think what we'll do here is we'll just fake out mm, do we fake out and maybe like i'm i'm gonna fit i'm gonna make a play that doesn't really make so much sense so i'm gonna ultra burst and just protect and go for the fake out into the Xerneas here because one of the things I could see is happening if we don't protect here and we fake out is obviously giving that type of thinny room to get an icy wind off and then it would kind of scupper our little plan about nuking either the Xerneas or the type of thinny the next turn so we will just protect um, and we'll see, yeah, there's a protect on the Xerneas so we know the next turn it cannot protect so it either is forced out into the Incineroar. Um, yeah, so they've got to know that, like my opponent has got to know that you know the play that we could make this next turn is definitely bring that Tapu Lele in and go for the Z move into the Xerneas. Um, and I don't know whether they try and like this. I'm conflicted here because I kind of want to go into the Finny where I know it's a guaranteed knockout onto that slot, but at the same time I know it's risky, and we could definitely fall into the trap. We could definitely fall into that trap, but I do want to go for the Z move into the Xerneas. But I don't know if it's too obvious in bringing Tapu Lele. Let's see. We're not going to see the Xerneas switch out. 
it would have switched out before the incineral so we, we are going to be able to remove the Xerneas from the field now which is huge for us because we get the psychic terrain up we probably will take an icy wind in the process but that's fine it does mean we've got our Xerneas uh, incineral on the back now for if that Rayquaza comes in we can cycle the intimidate onto it um, we'll have to adjust a little bit our board position as well because we will be threatened by that Rayquaza obviously the one thing that we need to do we're a little bit weak to that at the moment and it was identified in yesterday's episode someone mentioning you know we've made these changes but we've got to be very careful around Xerneas we don't really have a solid answer to it within the team and I think going into tomorrow's episode one of the things we will do is have a look at that option and maybe change some things up to have a little bit more variation with the team and just have a look, a little tweak on what we're actually playing at the minute. Um, one of the things I'm finding difficult, although we've got the Salamence in there and I do think it's got a lot of utility, is that it's one of those Pokemon I feel conflicted to bring all the time. So the Mega Slot is something that I do feel like we could really look at and work on, maybe like a Low Pony. Um, or something else along the lines, but I'll keep it a secret and we'll reveal it tomorrow So don't miss out tomorrow's episode. So we we do avoid the icy wind from that type of finny there We've got the incineral now coming onto the field. It is gonna cause us a little bit of pressure um, But it kind of fake out. I think what we'll do is just be a bit safe I don't want a Z move coming into my Necrozma slot um, So we'll switch that out there And do we, need, do we attack with Tapu Lele? Um, I don't feel like a light screen is really warranted right now and I think one of the things we could potentially do is bring in bring in Xerneas now and we could take the opportunity to go for a Geomancy. Have to be careful always in front of Incineroar and Tapu Fini when you do Geomancy and Tapu Fini here is likely normally on these sort of builds they do carry his so that's something just to keep in mind for you, everyone at home when you're playing against these extra teams the Finny normally does have the haze there so keep that in mind if you have got your own Xerneas and you're in a position to go for the um, the Geomancy but uh, we're not going to see an icy wind this turn just a nature's madness into Incineroar and, and a snarl oh, the memories of yesterday are coming back flooding back we can't obviously um, fake out here, but we can U turn out onto the Incineral. Um, do we Geomancy anyway? I don't really want to waste the Geomancy to be honest. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna protect Xerneas. So the Rayquaza is definitely in the back, but I think my opponents, yeah, they're going for it, trying to. Scout that out. Gets rid of the, the snarl reduction for us though, which is really nice. Um, so we will be able to pivot out on the Incineroar. Keep Incineroar in the back, because like I say, with that Rayquaza probably looming in the back, it's always going to be something that we want to try and keep safe for as long as possible until that Rayquaza does make an appearance. We'll bring the Tapu Lele back in. And we've got an easy switch out this next turn, where you can just bring in Incineroar once again. And um, we'll see if this Type of thing he goes for another here. I think what we'll do this next turn because the, the psychic train's got one more turn, no, two more turns left. Okay, okay. Um, we could just start, we could just start getting some damage onto the incinero, go moonblast and dazzling gleam and get some damage onto the finny. I expect another haze here from the finny, and as long as it's doing that, I don't really mind. Yeah, I'm just getting some damage onto the incinero is going to be useful. Maybe this procs a berry, but then at least the berry has been procced. Mm, no berry pocking, so it's not. It must be a Z move in Cinero. There's an icy wind coming out from the Tapu Fini. What are we going to see from the Incinero? Just another snarl. Okay, that's fine. It's fine, fine, fine. Because now what we'll do is switch in Incinero, we'll protect Xerneas, so we've got that fake out going into the next turn. I mean, we could quite easily just get rid of the Incinero here. Um, maybe not a bad idea to be honest and just go for that moon blast into that slot we'll still outspeed incineral and we take away the um i think one of the things that we took from yesterday's episode was giving the incineral too much room with that snarl just completely denied us any ability to utilize our geomancy and we don't want that happening again so we've got an opportunity here to take it down if it switches out into the Rayquaza then you're not really going to want to do that so it's likely that we get the incineral here and if they do switch it out for whatever reason then I'm totally happy with that. 
because we can we can deal with that, can't we? Um, but we are going to see just a nature's madness into the uh, the zonius here. Take us down to about 50% health, and we'll be able to remove that incineral quite comfortably from the field. Paving the way for the last Pokemon from my opponent's side of the field to come in. Uh, the psychic terrain does disappear, and that's the other thing that we've got the advantage of now. Of the Tapu Lele in the back, we can fake out the requires of this turn. Um, we can Geomancy here. Uh, we've got to be a bit careful around the uh, the Tapu Fini hazing us, though. Which is one of those things. Um, but I, I do think we could go for it. Um, because the Tapu Fini is actually probably a lot... Probably faster than us right now after the icy wind drop, um, and if it is, then it means it hazes before we geomancy, which is ideal for us. The Rayquaza is going to mega evolve. We're going to see this kick into action and bring that horrible Delta Stream animation to the field. Hopefully, we can get rid of that ASAP because I just hate it. It looks awful. As a protect, makes sense. You want to preserve your sash. Fake out, Finny, Finny, Nature's Madness, perfect, it's fine, get the Geomancy, now the problem is here, it's not so much of a problem, because I'm not going to call it a problem, but, the Ray is definitely sashed, and we're in extreme speed range, so one of the things we want to do here, is just make sure that we, uh, we bring the Lele in so we don't get sniped by the extreme speed. But my opponent's obviously going to be aware of that. So the smarter choice here for me would be to drag an ascent with the Rayquaza. We can get rid of the Xerneas. But at the same time doing that, you're losing so much resource with what you've got left. And we're opening the door again to keep Incineroar on the back to bring in to get that Intimidate. So it's always very useful to kind of... Just keep these things in mind and be very mindful of the options that you've got left and what the options that your opponent's got left. Not too worried about the Finny now, you know, it's got the Icy Wind, it's got the um, Nature's Madness. It, they do go for the Extreme Speed, so it gives us a little bit of room here. We're probably going to see um, a Haze come out from the Tapu Finny, but at this point it doesn't really matter too much because the Tapu Lele being scarfed coming in. Ooh, Heal Pulse, nice. Nice, nice, but not going to be enough, unfortunately, to... Um, to allow that Rayquaza room to survive here. So I think what we will do is go for a Sire Shock into the Tapu Fini and we'll just go for um, a Moonblast. I mean, we could, yeah, we'll go for a Moonblast into the Rayquaza. Sire Shock will be enough to get the Fini Moonblast. There's a Protect. We're gonna probably see a Haze or an Icy Wind here. Try and get an advantage that way, but fortunately the Sire Shock and the Psychic Terrain is gonna be enough to get the Fini. Um, and then the ray is just left by itself, so we should be able to take another win um, in today's one, which is excellent news for us, my friends. Um, and uh, although we've not really got to feature the Salamence very much, like I say, one of the things, at least we got to feature it in game one, which is really nice. But we have a bunch of time left in the Ultra series, so we're going to be playing a lot of cores that are going to be more centered around that Salamence, where we'll be able to have a real good run with them. And we see this disconnect from my opponent right at the death of things which is a little bit unfortunate um and oh well you know it's one of those things but tell you what guys because it has dragged over it feels like it's went over a little bit longer we're going to cut things short there but i will t guarantee to you we're going to have a really interesting build to finish up with this alternate cross Mazonius team tomorrow so we're going to spice things up do not miss tomorrow's episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. And make sure you remember that we have a poll at the minute on the YouTube channel asking what core you'd like to see. Most of all, going into next week's episode where we'll be revealing a brand new team to take into the Ultra Series. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for tuning in though, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And I will see you all for another one very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.